Hello again. In this next few lectures, we'll be looking at two sample tests. There are quite two kinds of such tests. One deals with paired data. I've got two samples, but the samples are paired. And the other one deals with independent data. So let's look at some of the ideas. First of all, let's look at this situation where I've got an experiment in which there's one treatment and one control group. So I'm here after the differences between the treatment and the control. In other words, I want to see if the treatment makes a, dif makes a difference. But if there are differences between the subjects in each of the groups, then I can't be sure whether the differences I'm seeing are due to the treatment or due to the just differences between subjects. So as an example, if I've got here patients A, B, C, D, two male, two female, and if I'm going to try and assign two patients to a treatment group and two to the control group, if it turns out that the two males go into the treatment group and the two females go into the control group, then you can see an obvious problem here that any differences I see between these two groups may be because of the treatment or because of the gender, the sex of the person. And I can't tell which it is. Because, for example, if a disease is more severe in males, and I find out that the treatment has no effect, maybe it's because the disease is more severe in males. Or the other way around, if the disease is more severe in females, then again I can't tell that the treatment effect I'm seeing for males is because of the disease being more severe in females or because of the treatment working. So I have a problem there. So the question is, is there a better way of doing this? What we do is we use matched pairs design or pair design, where what we do is we make sure that the individuals in the two groups are matched in every possible way, by gender, by every other thing like ethnicity, for example, or disease level, or health, those kinds of things. So, for example, that would match in this last example by sex. So I'm making sure there's a male and a female in each group, and I'm matching in that way. Otherwise, as I say, we'll have difficulty trying to work out if the treatment is working, or is the differences I'm seeing is because of the actual differences between the people. So this is a very important and powerful design where I match the two groups in, in every way possible. And so that mitigates for the fact that the differences between the groups themselves before I start with treatments and make sure there's as as possible. That means any, dif any differences I'm seeing is because of my treatment defects. <coughs> Here's another, another example you can look at yourself. The model here is going to be that I've got two population means So I've got two populations, and I've got two population means here, mu1 and mu2. And the interest really is to see if the means are the same, or they aren't the same. In other words, there's some differences. Either they're not equal to each other, or one's bigger than the other one. And those are the hypotheses, possible hypotheses, uh, for alternative hypotheses, depending on the question of interest. So what we do over here is, the model is going to be, I have two sets of data. The x1 to xn from the first, and the y1 to y and from the second. And because they're matched or paired, I'll have the same number in each sample. That's the first part. And they're paired in this way, xi, yi. What I'll do is, because I'm not, I'm not interested particularly just in the values of x's and y's, but I'm more interested in the differences. So I put di is xi minus yi, because the hypothesis here essentially deals with the difference being zero and the difference being something else. So I difference the data to start off with. And then I'm dealing just with the differences. And if I let mu g with the difference, the mean of the differences, and s d the standard deviation of the differences, then all I've got is a single sample test now. So my t statistic here is d by minus mu d over the s d over root n, and this is not right because I've got the s d in the wrong place. That should be s d outside the square root on root n. And that's the t n minus 1 distribution as before in my single sample case. Now, here, the distribution is exact if my di's are normal. And if they are normal, then my sample size needs to be large. In this case, the distribution here is only approximate. So be careful. For small sample sizes, 
I need normality of the dis differences, the DIs have to be normal. But for large sample sizes, it doesn't matter, because by central limit theorem, this standardized T statistic is still a T in minus 1 approximately. So, <clears throat> my hypothesis then will be expressed in terms of the mean for the differences. So it's going to be, <clears throat> as I've got here, mu1 minus mu2 is 0 becomes mu d equals 0. Mu1 taking mu2 is not 0 becomes mu d is not 0. And one of the other ones as well essentially is all in terms of mu d. And of course the hypothesis I have right here is going to be deciding the order I subtract determines hypotheses. If I want mu1 to be bigger than mu2, this one here, then I subtract x1 minus x2, and that'll be how it works. So you can see the example as we go through, but the order of subtraction is important because mu d, if I do the first minus second, will give me that. If I reverse the subtraction, I get that. So here's an example. I'm looking at the metals in uh, the water, so I'm looking at zinc concentrations at the surface of the water and also at the bottom of some water, uh, like lakes or, or rivers or dams. And so here I've got my 10 locations, and they're paired because for the same location I've got the zinc concentration at the bottom and the zinc concentration at the surface. And so I'm going to difference them first. So here are the differences, and I found the difference, the mean of the differences, and this in the direction of the differences. So hypothesis images here, uh, if you look at it, what it's saying is, does the concentration in the bottom water exceed that of the surface? So what I've done over here is I've had the bottom minus the top, right? So my D difference is the bottom minus the top. If the bottom exceeds the top, that means the difference will be positive. So my A, mu D here is 0 versus bigger than 0. So be careful. The way I subtracted it, it was bottom minus top, and I'm expecting that to be positive, so mu D is bigger than 0. My test statistic, again, I've got the same error over here. Excuse me. So I require the SD to be outside, SD on root of 10, and this is going to be T9. The sample size here, is, sample size is small, so I have to assume that my differences are normal. I am not interested in the actual data, the two, uh, the surface and the bottom measurements. They don't have to be normal, but the differences have to be normal. That's what I'm after over here. So my T observed over here, now, this number here should be again outside the square root. So I apologize for the errors over here, but essentially I want, if I can just change that quickly, what I want is I can take the square root out of there. And it should be root of 10 there. Now I'm pretty sure the calculations are correct, but uh, you can correct it, check it for me. So here the probability and the p-value is probably t bigger than 4.684, my uh, uh, t-value observed. And of course, the bigger than here matches the bigger than in my statement for the p-value. And from R, this comes out to be 0 0.004, which is less than 0 0.025. I'm doing a one-sided test, so my alpha level by default is 2.5%. That means, because this is much smaller than that, uh, the alpha level, so I'm concluding this conclusive evidence against the null hypothesis. So I conclude here the mean Z concentration in the bottom is greater than that on the surface. And if I work out a 95% confidence interval for the mean difference, then here's the mean difference is plus or minus my T value is 2.262. I've been given that. And the usual stuff happens, it's going to be S of root N there, and S of root N there, apologize for the typos. And so that should be okay. Now what you'll find here is that this is positive. This is always about zero. And that makes sense because I did decide earlier that my mean difference was positive. My, my mu D was bigger than zero by my hypothesis. And that I see here is my confidence interval is always positive. Here's an exercise you can have a look at yourself. I'll leave that for you to try yourself. So that covers our work on the paired t-test. We'll take a look at the independent samples in the next lecture. Thank you very much.